So what happens? There can be failures. But and the interesting thing to note about it is that in a memory, many contacts and vias are shared. Some are shared across, for example, four cells. Hmm? Some are shared across two cells, like this, the rows. Some are shared across columns. So which, which contacts and vias do you think are shared across columns? Bit line and bit line maps. Columns. This one. Which one would this be? That is shared along a row, but across columns. Hmm? A word line. Word line. Which one would this be? Vertically shared? Bit line. Bit line. What about this one, which is shared across four? Ground. Ground. Uh, hmm? This could be a bit line, this could be VDD, so on. Hmm? So there are all these vias which are shared across the boundaries. So if the first one failed, suppose this one failed, how many cells would fail? One cell. One cell would fail. If the other one fails, how many cells would fail now? Two, sir. If, if so, do you realize either that one fails or one of these fails? That we are losing two cells. Hmm? If this one fails, how many cells would fail? Four. So the same kind of defect, a via or a contact failure, can lead to one cell failure, or a double bit failure, or a quad bit failure. Are you able to see this? Same kind of defect that your, so for example, the trench was not made well and due to which the contact or the via failed. It can lead to single bit, double bit or a quad bit failure. Are you able to see this? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. Hmm? So, uh, in memories, you will realize, and when you will look at the silicon results, you will see that failures are typically single bit, double bit, or quad bit. Then in addition to that, you also have partial, partial columns, uh, you know, or partial row failures, where a part of the row is failing or a part of the column is failing. But most of the failures in a memory are because of single bit or double bit or quad bit. So if you want to recover the yield of the bit cells, what do you need to do? You need to add two cells, one cell, four cells, or what do you do? So I didn't get this part, so I mean. So I say that, okay, because of the high density design that I have made, I can expect more failures, physical failures in my design. Is it clear till here? Yes, sir. Hmm? So if there are more physical failures, I know I can anticipate those physical failures and I can plan to correct them. How do you correct a physical failure? You say, okay, I will discard the defective cell and I will pick up the, uh, pick up a new cell, which, which is not failing. I will pick up another cell, which is not failing. My question is, how would you pick up these new cells? Would you want to add just one or two cells somewhere? Or is there another way in which you will activate the new cells? Sir, is that even possible to pick up the new cells actually? Because the thing which you are doing now is before uh, fabrication, right? This is after fabrication. Oh, so fabrication, fabrication has happened. Uh, fabrication has happened and you see there is a failure inside the memory array. There is a single bit failure. And you want to replace the single bit failure with another cell which you have already placed in a in a bank somewhere or in a in a location somewhere. Is that even possible, sir? Yes, uh, sir you can put in some extra cells, no? Uh, sir, maybe one approach could be that we will have the built-in self test uh, 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 our, our design implemented uh, uh, for these cells, and then if the particular cell is set to fail, then uh, 
uh, the child, the decoders will be such that uh, we will be able to route this particular word line selection to the new bank or something like that. Mm. Good. Well, sir, there is one thing I have doubt. So, like after we have fabricated, then we would be doing the testing to figure out which cell is failing. And after we have figured out the which cell is failing, then we would be doing kind of selection. This yeah, then we will do the replacement because okay. the cell is failing, I will replace this cell. If another cell was failing, I would replace that cell. So that during testing, I would be able to locate the exact location of the failing bit cell, right? Yeah. So now you understand why the scrambling information was very important. Mm, yes, sir. Mm? Okay. So what do we do now? Ranjit said, okay, let us replace the entire row. So if you want to replace the entire row, basically the decoder will select a different word line. Then what we do, we need to add in the memory array, we need to add before anything else, an extra row, which is called as a redundancy row. Redundancy because it was not required, but we added a redundant row, which we would use if there is a failure somewhere. Hmm? But we did not add just one row. We realized that two cells could fail or even four adjacent cells could fail. If I had two rows, I can correct all such kind of failures. So if I can replace two adjacent rows, then even vertical dual bit defects or quad bit defects, I can, I can correct easily. Are you able to see this? Sir, uh, two rows per a cell. Yes. I mean, two rows per array, I will add, or two rows I could add per uh -huh. memory also. That depends. That is my choice. So, like, based upon the qualification that I do, I'm suggesting that at max, let's say, four bit cells can fail. No, no, no. And we could say there is one defect that could happen in the memory, which can lead to at most four, four cells failing. Okay. This is the so maximum I mean, that one defect can cause. So, and how am I able to say that only one defect will occur, not more than one defect can occur? So, see, if, if more than one defect happens on every die, let us say, hmm, if more than one defect happens on every die, it means your process is not in control. Okay. As a designer, you can take care of some process idiosyncrasies, but you cannot take over the entire process. You cannot compensate for the entire process simply going haywire, especially not as a memory designer where you are definitely constrained by a lot of area. <laughs> See, if I was designing PLLs or something like that, then what happens? I have just one PLL in the entire chip. For that one PLL, I can also add some trimming bits. I can make the device to be large. I can do so many things because it is coming only once. But for a, if you're talking about a memory cell, there are millions of memory cells there. You want, you do not want to, uh, you know, uh, add all those things. So you cannot compensate for process. So a PLL will compensate for process. A PLL will compensate for process variation. And then it will say, I will always generate one gigahertz block. Whether you give me a slow cell, a slow lot, or you, whether you give me a fast lot, I will always generate one gigahertz block. That is what a PLL does now. A clock generator does that. Whatever the, the thing you give it, the whatever lot, it will always generate the same clock. Isn't it? Yes. Hello? Yes, so that is, that is done by the use of some process compensation. For a memory cell, you can't do all that. Hey, no? You can do that. So what we say is we will add. So suppose this one fails. What I will do is I will replace two rows, either the, the row just above it and this row or the row just below it and this row. And I will activate the repair row. Hmm? So when this fails, the repair row gets activated and the uh, failing row is removed pair of failing rows are removed. So whenever the new address comes, what do I need to do? 
I need to compare that address with the failing address. And if there is a match, I will select the repair word lines. If there is no match, I will go and select whatever word line was to be selected. Are you able to see this? Any questions? Uh, sir, can you repeat how V is zero in on the failing row? Oh, that we will run a best run. We will do a best run. We will test it and we will know this one is failing. Okay, okay, got it. The direct location we can always find out through a test run. Na? Now we are talking about repair. To complete the repair, what do you need to do? You need to replace this particular row decoder and row with the repair one. How do you do that? You simply compare the address with failing address. If address and failing address match, the repair row deck will be selected. If they do not match, the regular row decoders will be selected. Uh, so after the my fabrication is done and I've located this uh, my failing bit cell, then this uh, kind of uh, failing address would be, I would get to know about this information, right? Yes. So once you know the failing address, you will have to program it. How will you program it? There is something called as one-time programmable memory or like fuses. So you will fuse, you will blow away some fuses on your chip and say, okay, this is the failing address. Hmm? Is this clear? Now, what is the loss with this kind of a setup? What timing would get degraded? If at all. Uh, so the access to the memory will be uh, will be larger. It will be a high latency because comparison logic will also be present. Access to the memory or selection of the word line? Yeah, selection of the word. Hmm. So address setup will increase. Yes, yes. Hmm? Yeah. When the clock comes, the word line would immediately get selected. But what you need to do, which word line to select, that decision making takes longer now. So address setup increases. There is no impact on word line to queue delay. Are you able to see this? Hmm? So a row redundancy implementation would lead to increased setup, but almost no impact on access time. Now, even if you do not become a memory designer, even if you become a computer architect or a digital designer, this piece of information would be very helpful as to which kind of redundancy to apply in different cases. Okay. Now, you remember we also talked about partial row failures. Why would they happen? Why could partial row failures happen or row failures happen? Uh, so due to word line being stuck, like pro um, program by mistake at one point. Yeah, due to some similar fault, contact being malformed or we are being malformed or some short between some metal and some poly or something in the row decoder region and then the word line would be selected incorrectly or may not get selected at all. Hmm? So those row failures, how do you correct them? Again, by using this row redundancy scheme, you can correct partial row failures also. Hmm? What if there was some sense amplifier which was failing? See, row decoder is still digital logic. The probability of it failing is lesser. The probability of a sense amplifier offset requirement being high and therefore a sense amplifier failing is higher. So how would you recover that if a sense amplifier fails? What kind of redundancy would you prefer in that case? So the column inverter, the inverter, the we, so we can basically uh, tune the inverter such that or the replica cells so that the delay get, uh, I can, the sense enable delay, I can adjust. So if you would adjust the sense, sense enable delay on silicon, Raghav, then what happens? The memory would, would, would increase its access time. Mm -hmm. 
wherever memory outputs were supposed to be latched you will not be able to latch them now mm-hmm. so it's as good as a failure 